What's up, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I've got my Apple Watch. I've got it on uh, on the underside of my arm so I can film it here. I wanted to cover a couple things because I've actually had it for a little while, been testing it with and without my iPhone. This is the L uh, GPS and LTE cellular version. Uh, this one's on AT&T. And, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk to you is because I've been actually thinking about returning this watch. Uh, there are some things that I like, but uh, the critical thing here is that what I've learned about what works and doesn't work on LTE because you know, when I went into this watch, I knew that there were some things that are limited. Uh, part of that, I'm sure, is because Apple is, you know, trying to work with cellular carriers and make it affordable. But it certainly is not a small iPhone or an iPod, you know, connected to cellular. There is a lot of limitations. And basically, it comes down to um, there are a number of things that require the iPhone to work. So the iPhone is really kind of the, the heavy lifter to connect to the Internet uh, to or to LTE and then uh uh, display that on the Apple Watch, and I want to kind of go over some things um, that uh, that do do. Maybe you know what? Let's go over the things that don't work first. Okay, um, I think it's probably no surprise that text messages don't work. And what I've pulled up here is a text message. I tried sending it; it's not delivered. I'm going to send another one here uh, that just says yes. And what it's going to try to do is send this. Uh, and this is um, an account I set up. It does not have iMessage. As you can see, the little green status bar there is trying to send it. It will error out. It does give you a notification that text message wasn't sent. It probably takes a minute or two later. Um, but it's going to keep trying that. And even though my phone is off, it's never going to be successful. It does not send it over iMessage now or a text message. Now, I will say that it is known that iMessage does work, but text messages don't work. So if you're not... Um, you know, sending a message directly to another iOS device, it's never going to work. Now, you will get the notification of failure and there is no way to kind of push it again. However, I will say that it does sync later. So what I've done here is I've sent this text message and it's never going to um, send on its own. But when I do power up my phone, it will connect and it will send that out. So luckily, all those text messages that have gotten backlogged, you know, end up getting sent maybe half an hour later or an hour later when I'm connected back to my phone. But they do do that. So they do send them out later. So that's maybe something to keep in mind. If, you know, if you want to respond to things, but they don't have to be there right away, that's OK. But if you're really trying to respond to a lot of people, on an Android device or some other sort of uh, other platform that's going to be an issue. Now, the other thing I will say, we'll probably get the notification that that's not working there. Uh, the other thing I will say is that the calendar uh, appears to only sync to uh, the phone. And so all of these things, like I scheduled here, chili cook-off at 2 o'clock, um, as long as it connects to the phone and as long as the phone has gotten the update. So, you know, for me, I use Gmail. So if I enter an event in Gmail, uh, it's not going to show up on my Apple Watch, no matter what I do. Okay. So what it's going to do is I'm going to, once the phone picks up that change, that pushes it to the Apple Watch. All right. So that's, kind of okay in that if most of your calendar is set up, I'm still getting my notifications here, even if I don't have my phone on me, which is a lot of times, I'm not going to miss my next meeting because at some point it's grabbed all my events. Now, if I've added something in between and I haven't had my iPhone with me, that's a problem. However, it is kind of interesting that I can, via Siri, add new events. Now, I want to tell you kind of the rules on that. So I'm going to schedule something here. Okay. Schedule pick up dog for 1 p.m. You have a conflict then. Do you want me to schedule it anyway? So I can confirm it. And uh, Your event is scheduled for 1 p.m. today. Perfect. Um, now I think it's going to show up there. It's going to my my uh, next event, pick up dog at 1 p.m. Um, the good thing is, so if I have something come up, someone's like, hey, I, can we meet in 30 minutes or something or whatever it is, you can add those to your calendar. Now those aren't being pushed back up to the cloud, right? So that's my experience is that what you're actually getting is um, it just being stored locally here. And then when your iPhone comes back on, it'll sync it to the iPhone and then that will uh, push it up. Now, there you go. You can see that the text message unsent um, notification is there. I can dismiss it. Now, I can't force touch it or anything to try to re-push it. And that probably won't matter because I know that I'm not connected to my iPhone, so it's never going to push it. But at least you get the message there um, eventually that it comes up. Now, uh, once I sync back, as I was saying here, just like the text message, once it connects to my phone, uh, this will get synced up, the calendar event, the text message. So that's all good. It's not lost forever. 
um, but just remember that you know so this notification like pick up dog is only going to be here local on my watch until uh, my phone comes back online so no LT connected there um, the other thing I want to say here is the uh, the email so if I order uh, if I pull it up here you can see I have a little no phone icon and that's because uh, it is not syncing email. Even if I pull down here to refresh, it never does that. Now, I can do some things here like, um, you know, trash things and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, and they will eventually sync back to the phone, but it won't ever pull live email. That was actually a big disappointment for me. You know, when I was rolling out, I left my phone at home purposely because I thought, man, you know, um, I'll read email if it comes through. Nope, you're not going to get email. Uh, it's just never going to work. Obviously, we'll sync up later. In fact, let's. Uh, I want to show you here that if I try to create an email, it looks like my LTE connectivity disappeared on me. Um, so this may not work here. But if I try to compose an email, so I may have to fill in this later. Send an email to my dad. I can help you compose an email on your iPhone. So as you can see there, it won't uh, compose an email here and it'll ask me to do it on my iPhone, but since my iPhone isn't either with me or turned off, uh, you know, that's not that big of a help. So you don't have email access uh, via LTE on the Apple Watch exclusively. Bummer. The, the last thing I want to show you here too is uh, anything that doesn't store the data locally, like this Downcast app here uh, is my podcast player. This is this was a big disappointment. I guess I understand that you may have gigs of podcasts, downloaded videos, audios, uh, but one of the things I was really hoping for is not having to carry my phone and listen to my podcast or catch up with them, you know, pair Bluetooth headphones to the watch, uh, be out on my riding lawnmower or working in the garden or just out walking or jogging or something like that and uh, listening to podcasts without my phone, not gonna work because they're not stored locally on here on the phone really all it is is a control like a remote control for your iphone so that was kind of a big disappointment and that's going to be kind of common through any of these things that uh, you know most of these apps especially the third party apps like wonderlist is what i use for productivity again i can't even get anything here uh from it because my phone isn't here so that's most apps now um i should say that there are a couple that do work independently so like this nest app and despite the fact that I'm not connected to the LTE right now is gonna be a problem, but I can con connect to my thermostat and control that without my iPhone being on, which is kind of interesting. The other things that do work, um, and they're not gonna really work now because I don't know why I don't have LTE connectivity, but it, like the, US, uh, the USA Today app, um, the news app, these will pull some news here. And so, you know, uh, reading it is gonna be a little bit of a challenge, um, CNBC does not so you have to have the app but you know it's kind of nice because some of these will have some news you can read them now I will say though that um, you know on a lot of these they're just little snippets and sometimes like on the USA Today app it kind of gives you a little like abstract on it well it's not going to work today but not work right now at least but there's like a read more when you click on that I think it's basically requiring the iPhone so uh, you kind of have a little bit of especially in third-party apps some kind of hit or miss there but most of them do not work without the iPhone all right so let's talk about the things that does that do work on the Apple Watch with LTE not connected to the iPhone. Uh, that is the phone itself that was demoed, uh, pretty well known. And iMessages does work. Text, text don't, but iMessages do. Uh, the other thing that does work, which I was pretty impressed with, was with uh, was navigation. Take me to the nearest McDonald's. And so it will give you directions, um, you know, and uh, those are actually pretty nifty. Um, it will give you kind of the tapping and the notification, um, and that doesn't require, uh, you know, uh, the connection to the iPhone. So that's why I think that they advertise it as GPS plus cellular because uh, it's not really um, – the GPS is not really kind of the unique thing. You expect that to be in there, but kind of they're saying that the GPS will work with the cellular connection and kind of find those locations. In fact, um, if you long press on that destination, you can actually call that uh, destination as well. So those are the things that uh, don't work, you know, like email, text messages, calendaring, it's kind of, except when it syncs back. Um, any of the third-party apps that require local storage, but the things that do work are the things like the Nest app, uh, phone calling, iMessage, and navigation. Um, I think for me, you know, it, it ended up being, you know, I was really kind of disappointed by the, the number of things that don't work on LTE. But for me, 
having at least the calendaring here, uh, the notific, you know, those those reminders, the notifications is kind of a big deal. I run a lot of back-to-back -back meetings, and so that was kind of important to me. So I think it will uh, serve um, its purpose for now. It would be great if Apple could continue to work with cellular providers to open up. Uh, more connections and kind of more access to the cellular networks for more of these uh, apps or find out uh, ways to make them kind of be more of a standalone um, you know native app on the watch so that's uh, my take on it uh, yeah I, I'm gonna keep it I won't return it although you know after discovering those things it definitely crossed my mind so hopefully that helps you figure out uh, what is uh, worthwhile uh, you know, if it's a worthwhile purchase for you to pick up an Apple Watch based on what works and doesn't on LTE, Peter Von Panda out.